So uh, we hope you've been attending um, our sessions on graph uh, databases and analytics. If not, here is a link to our Ask Tom uh, series for graph office hours. Uh, we typically have sessions about once a month. And we, uh, we invite you to look at previous sessions and also look at uh, uh, future sessions that are listed there. A standard safe harbor statement. So what we want to talk about today is the use of graph databases and graph analytics when building recommendation engines. So you might have attended some of our previous sessions. Um, in case you haven't, I'll just do a quick recap of graph uh, database and analytics features that are available with Oracle database. And I'll talk briefly about creating a graph from data you have in database tables. And then I'll hand it over to Ryota and uh, Caroline for the bulk of the presentation. As you can see here, we are joining from different parts of the globe. And I want to extend a warm welcome to Caroline, who is joining us from our partner, uh, Kagla. So starting with the recap. So graph databases and analytics are used in a variety of applications. I've listed here a few examples. Uh, the financial services industry, uh, law enforcement and security and manufacturing and so on. For example, in the financial services industry, it is used to detect fraud. It's used to find um, unusual patterns in the data which might indicate something that needs to be looked into further, like cycles in your graph or anomalous patterns in the way money is being transferred and so on. In manufacturing, an example is modeling bill of materials uh, using graphs to model the different complex interconnections between the components in a bill of materials that you might have, for example, when you're manufacturing a car, which has around 30,000 parts and graphs are useful to model uh, such an interconnected uh, system. So what do we have in the Oracle database when it comes to graph features? You can store, manage, analyze, and query graphs. And all of this is built on the enterprise capabilities of uh, Oracle infrastructure. And we have an in-memory graph server to make this highly scalable. So several graph operations are compute intensive. So the in-memory graph server helps you scale to very, very large graphs. So we have all the enterprise capabilities, we're highly scalable. And then when it comes to specifically to graph features, we have a property graph query language because when you're querying a graph, you need to be able to specify a graph pattern. You need to be able to specify vertices, edges, between and specify, a specific, if you're looking for a subgraph in a graph, you need to be able to specify the graph pattern. So the query language should have that feature. So we have a SQL-like property graph query language, and you'll see several examples of that in this session. I should also add that we are actively participating in the SQL standard, uh, that the standards committee that's working on extending SQL to have graph query capabilities. Uh, we also have about over 50 pre-built graph analysis algorithms. For example, uh, algorithms like PageRank that identifies important nodes in a, in a graph clustering to identify communities in a graph, shortest path algorithms like Dijkstra and Bellman Ford and so on. This, uh, all these algorithms are available as pre-built Java APIs that you can easily call from the Java application. So you don't have to write additional code. And then finally, with graphs come visualization. Because an advantage of using graphs in analytics is to be able to visualize your data from the point of view of connections and relationships between them. So we have a lightweight web application that you can access from your browser. So you can basically point your browser to the in-memory graph server and then visualize the graph. And of course, we work with third-party partners like uh, Kagla and others. So why are we looking at recommendation systems? Some recommendation 
uh, systems are an, in, are an interesting problem. They have a wide uh, variety of applications. You can use them in e-commerce applications, optimizing real-time ads in mobile applications, yeah, and for personalizing content in online education systems and more. So there are any number of ways of building recommendation systems. So graphs are uh, give you kind of a new dimension to this because you can look at your data from the point of view of connections and relationships between data items. So it's interesting to look at why graphs are how graphs can be used in building recommendation systems. And some of the challenges we have in recommendation systems is that you need to uh, have a high level of precision. I still find it annoying when I'm watching YouTube and I get recommendations that I really don't care for. Um, and you want to be able to apply algorithms to existing data. You don't want to spend a lot of time uh, converting data into a specific format for the recommendation systems. You want to be able to apply algorithms to data that you have as is in your system. And of course, it all has to work with high performance and have the ability to integrate data from multiple sources. So let's look at in this session primarily that the, what uh, how you can build a recommendation system using uh, using graphs. So as continuing with the recap, I'll just talk about how you can create a graph from relational tables. So this is first an architecture that you would use in any typical graph application. You have your uh, data stored uh, in a database and your graphs can be stored in the database. And then you load the graph into this in-memory graph server that is a highly optimized parallel server that we designed in collaboration with Oracle Labs, comes from innovations from Oracle Labs to perform highly uh, for compute intensive graph analytics operations in memory. And then you have a set of client tools to interact with this graph server or interact with the database. For example, you have the graph visualization tool I was just talking about, where you can run graph queries in PGQL and get the results and visualize the results as a graph. You can use Apache Zeppelin to run property graph uh, uh, query language queries and also run uh, some of the analytics API. Uh, you can use uh, the JShell client to call the Java APIs. And of course, you can also have a custom REST server that we will also be talking about today. So when you're creating a graph from relational tables, and this is a question many people have, they'll say, I have all of, these data, I have all of this data as tables, how do I create a graph? So looking at, for example, a product recommendation system, you would probably have tables like this. You would have products table, customers table, sales table, countries that the customers belong to, and so on and so forth. So you can start looking at this table and then start looking at how you want to create a graph from this table. So the first thing you would do is to identify which are the data entities in your data like customer is a data entity, a product is a data entity. And as we saw in the earlier slide, we had a customer table and we had a products table. So you would typically say that anything that's a data entity, like a customer becomes a vertex in the graph. And the properties of this vertex are perhaps the columns that you had in the customer's table, like the customer name, the customer address, these are all properties for a customer. So each row in that customer table can become a vertex in your graph, and the column values can become properties of the vertex. Similarly, for the product entities, each product can become a vertex in your graph, and then you have the, uh, the column values as, as properties. And purchased is a natural relationship. When a customer purchased a product, that's a relationship between the, these two types of vertices, and that becomes a relationship or an edge. So typically, when you're modeling a graph, you would sit down with a pen and paper, think about what you're looking for in your graph, and then decide, look at your uh, relational uh, database and say, these are my vertices, and these are likely to my, be my edges. And you can also automatically uh, determine some of the edges. For example, if tables have a foreign key relationship between them, that is an automatic edge. 
Or in addition, you can add edges uh, to the graph because you think there should be a connection between these two uh, data entities. So it's very, it's quite easy and intuitive when you think of your data in this way, when you think of it as some tables become vertex tables, some relationships become edges, and you can start putting together your graph uh, in that way. Once you have that mapping, you can use the property graph query language syntax to create a graph. And it's quite simple here, as you can see, you're creating a property graph and you're listing the vertex tables. And we're saying the customer's table is going to be a vertex table. This means that every row in the table becomes a node in the graph, a vertex in the graph. The products uh, table is going to be a vertex table. And here are the properties that I'm going to have for these nodes selected from the columns in the table. And then here is my edge table. And I'm going to give the um, edge, uh, the, I'm, I'm going to pick the edges from the sales table. And I'm going to say that the source for this source vertex for this edge is a customer and the destination node for this edge is a product and I'm going to add the labels purchased. And I'm going to add a property quantity sold and all of this information is in the table. You just have to identify which are the columns, which is the source table, the destination table and the label and so on. So once you sit down and create your graph from your set of tables, it's quite easy to create the graph using this PG curl statement. And there will always be um, uh, there, there might also always be a need to kind of improve your model as you analyze your graph. Because it depends on what you would like to uh, do with the graph. Like for example, something that you selected as an edge, you might decide is actually better as a vertex. Like the purchased um, uh, label that we added to an edge, so that the label which represented the relationship purchase decide to make that a, a vertex and so on and more information can be added more properties can be added and so on so this can be added again you can use the property graph query language to add new information to your graph and with that let me hand off to uh, Ryota for talking about how uh, building recommendation systems with graphs okay Okay, in this section, I'm going to introduce uh, three major recommendation algorithms whose high performance implementations are available on Oracle Property Graph by default, and how we can run those scripts and visualize the result using the built-in uh, visualization tools. Uh, going back to this uh, architecture overview, uh, graph server has uh, built-in algorithms which are often used for recommendation system. And user can run those algorithms uh, connecting from those clients, such as separate notebook, and visualize the results with uh, graph visualization tool here. The first algorithm is personalized page rank. The idea behind uh, uh, customers or product which have more paths, like a reachable path from the target customer here, uh, can get higher ranks. Uh, in this diagram, the red person, the red customer is the target customer, and we want to find out those recommended uh, products for this customer. And uh, customers with higher lungs, like, like these uh, people, may be similar to the target customer, uh, this red customer, in their purchase history. Or well, in this case, uh, this customer has purchased these three products, and these three products are bought by other customers as well. And especially for these two customers, uh, have been uh, purchasing uh, the exactly the same things uh, with, uh, as, as this red person. That's why uh, those people uh, have got uh, uh, higher ranks, which means um, 
uh, their purchase uh, activity is similar to this uh, red person. And also for uh, product signed, uh, products with higher ranks, uh, those should be uh, recommended to this person. But for these three uh, products are already purchased by this person. So maybe we can um, uh, sort uh, the uh, list of those products by the score so that we can get uh, the, rec uh, the product we should recommend for this person. Uh, so for uh, getting this uh, rank uh, called page rank, the algorithm is like a, uh, the first step is to give the initial rank to the starting node. And then uh, the rule is like a, each node uh, gets ranks from incoming edge. In this case, uh, this, pr uh, this product is connected to this and having, having this uh, incoming edge so that uh, this node can get ranks like score from this person. And then uh, this uh, node have to, has to also distribute its own ranks to outgoing edges. So other, uh, sorry, nodes here can also get ranks from this product. And then we can iterate uh, this process until the ranks are settled. Uh, the detail of this uh, um, algorithm is written in this uh, blog. So uh, let's just uh, move to the next algorithm, collaborative filtering. This is uh, very uh, well known and widely used for recommendation in, especially for uh, EC uh, website. The ideas behind uh, the customers sharing their purchase activities have the same feature, like uh, tastes. And the product side has also uh, common features. For example, uh, baseball bat and baseball globe uh, might be uh, bought together or bought by the same person uh, because they are sharing uh, the feature, uh, like a baseball feature. And maybe other products might have a, a football feature or a basketball feature, right? Then according to the features between a customer and product, we can predict their affinity. Maybe one person have a, a baseball feature rather than football feature so that uh, we can recommend, uh, well, we can, we can find the affinity uh, between uh, baseball grow and that person. Uh, for explaining the algorithm, uh, we can use this uh, figure. Firstly, we need to run matrix factor factorization. Uh, from this input, uh, this, in this table has the information that uh, those people in the row uh, has uh, given those scores for, for each movie, for, for each movie, right? And then uh, this table can be uh, factorized into two tables here, one for movies and one for, cust one for uh, people, like one for users. And then uh, when we uh, multiply this matrix and another matrix, you can get uh, this uh, original matrix. Using uh, matrix factorization, you, you can discover important features such as feature one, two, three, four, and uh, feature vectors for each customers and product. So in this case, Star Wars have uh, uh, this feature vector having uh, four numbers, and also Alice has uh, this feature vector. And when we multiply these two uh, feature vectors, we can get the uh, uh, predicted score, set, which is a, a kind of affinity, the, also like a possibility of a purchase, right? So for uh, uh, those missing cells, which means uh, those people are not purchased those items yet, for, for those cells, uh, maybe we can uh, predict whether those people are going to buy or not with uh, 
with some uh, probability. And again, uh, this uh, uh, algorithm is written on uh, this uh, document. And also the uh, how we can use and how we, how we can use on uh, these algorithms on uh, graph server is also uh, in this document. The third algorithm is relatively new algorithm, uh, which is called deep walk. Uh, as you can imagine, um, deep walk is using a uh, neural network. And the ideas behind uh, similar customers or products have uh, similar connection patterns in the graph. So uh, products pur purchased by similar customers or can be recommended. And also or, uh, when the customer is interested in particular product, uh, let's say uh, one customer is viewing one product on the website. Maybe we can um, also suggest uh, similar products. In this case, uh, we want to know whether those products and uh, customers are similar or not in the context which are included in the graph. Uh, the algorithm is like uh, in this figure. Uh, you have input graph and this uh, algorithm can take a graph as an input and use neural network to get the uh, vector representation of uh, those nodes. So we call this uh, node embedding as well. So the uh, input is graph and we can run uh, random walks uh, from all of those nodes so that uh, when we get when, when we when we run uh, four step four hops random walk we can get these sequences and then these sequences can be then an input can be the input of the uh, neural network in this case three layer uh, skip gram neural network and then uh, uh, which is called world to back uh, which is often used uh, for learning documents like the, 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 the similarity of those words. And then uh, we can get the vector representations of uh, nodes so that uh, we can calculate the distances between those nodes in the vector space. This algorithm is already included in the, uh, the, the uh, PGX ML library. Uh, but it's not, it is not supported as a product yet, but uh, we plan to support it. So um, if you're interested in, uh, please visit uh, this document so that you can find other um, neural network based uh, algorithms using graph. Okay, I'm, I want to show uh, one uh, small demo uh, for the First algorithm page junk personalized page junk using this sample data set. Uh, this is uh, downloaded from Kaggle. Uh, this is an online retail data set which includes well, more than 4,000 customers and more than 3,000 products. And the relationship between them, like uh, uh, this number of purchases. And for uh, preparing this data uh, using relational database, we can remove uh, duplicated purchases just for uh, simplify the story. And for running page rank algorithm, uh, we need to add reverse edges, uh, not only from uh, uh, customer to product, but we need the edge. Uh, from product to customer, that's why. All the uh, scripts uh, on my GitHub. So if you are interested in just uh, uh, visit here. For learning algorithms, you can write the scripts in Groovy or tep uh, on Tepri notebook. We plan to support Python 2 from the next release. 
the first command here are uh, to get one particular node, uh, customer one, two, four, four, five. Then, uh, well, which, which this, this is actually a uh, target customer and to run personalized page rank algorithm uh, for this graph, having uh, this customer as a starting point. Then uh, this method for personalized page rank uh, is going to um, uh, calculate the ranks for all of those nodes on the graph and return the results, uh, the ranks into the node property. So once you get those ranks on each node as node property, we can get the result uh, using PGQL query like this. So this query is trying to get uh, nodes only and their label is uh, product. So we, we are trying to get uh, the list of products, but not customers because we want to recommend products, but not customers, right? And also uh, this uh, not exist clause is uh, removing those products who, which are already purchased by this customer. And then uh, order by page rank. So we want to get top uh, 10 uh, recommendation. So just a quick question here. Yes, Ryota. So um, it looks like when you ran the personalized page rank algorithm, mm -hmm. which um, uh, like we were discussing earlier, is the pre-built algorithm that you're just able to call from a Java um, application. Yes. It looks like the properties are stored, the page rank values are stored as properties of the vertices in the graph. Yes. Exactly. So then you're able to say p dot page rank. You're actually accessing the property that is stored with the page rank value. So when you run the algorithm, looks like the properties the the page rank value is computed and stored as a property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. It's it's a bit uh, unusual uh, if you are uh, a, a relational database user because this function is actually adding new property on the node. So it's like a, right. uh, adding, adding new columns uh, right. for, for, for those uh, uh, table. That's why it's, it's a bit uh, new right. for uh, yeah, most of us. But very useful because then you can, you're kind of able to uh, order in descending order, right? So you're using mm -hmm. kind of SQL-like construct, order by descending, these are all very SQL-like features. You're able mm -hmm. to use that to, sort uh, the yes. nodes the vertices by page rank value. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of, you can do all of that in a compact way. Yeah. Correct, correct. Uh, if you are like a, a Python user and, and data scientist, maybe it is common to generate uh, engineered features as new columns. And this is something like that. So um, if you uh, look at the Zeppelin notebook here, uh, maybe it is more uh, intuitive. Um, it's the same thing. Uh, we can get graph, which is already uh, expanded on the memory. And then uh, having this graph, uh, we can run the uh, page, personalized page rank in the second block. Yeah. And then, uh, well, before this, uh, the graph, those nodes, do not have page rank property. But after this uh, vertex property uh, name page rank has added, and then uh, we can access to that property using a PGQL. Right. So PGQL query returns a, a result in a table format. So uh, you can uh, get this table uh, familiar for relational uh, database engineers. 
maybe yeah, uh, you can visualize it. Then uh, the second tool, second built-in tool uh, I'd like to introduce is uh, graph visualization. And this is a built-in tool uh, for uh, this product. So everyone can use for free. And for, especially for those users who can write PGQL query, uh, in this uh, UI, you can write PGQL query on top and get the result in this visual. So it's an interactive visualization against queries. And the highlights, like uh, the uh, size of nose edges and the colors well, and layout, they can be uh, modified and also saved so that you can share the uh, highlight with other people as well. So if you, uh, let me get my mouse pointer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this setting can change the uh, size of nose and colors, etc. So for starting edge, uh, sorry, starting node, I put color of red and maybe you can change the color for uh, other nodes like uh, blue, like this. And also the uh, size of the nodes uh, depends on the uh, value of this page rank property. Then you can get uh, this visualization and you can save this highlight too. And that's the nice thing about graphs, right? I mean, uh, we just look at the visualization of a graph and you get a lot of information from it. The size mm -hmm. of nodes tell you something, the color of the nodes tell you something, the edges tell you something. So you can immediately figure out which are the important properties, uh, sorry, products, which are the important products which are the vertices that are connected to each other, which are the vertices that you're grouping in a certain way, like you're given products, one color, and the customers different right. colors. So graphs are a very visual way of looking at data. Mm -hmm. And again, um, the advantage of using graph database is that um, the page rank score, uh, scores uh, are stored on uh, the well, graph server so that uh, other users can access to the uh, same score and, uh, and, 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 and look at in this uh, visualization. Okay. So um, this is a one way uh, to see the result. At the same time, for, us for those users who do not write PGQL, uh, maybe this tool is uh, more difficult. And uh, for those people who need uh, customized visualization, whether uh, this person uh, should be um, um, visualized on the top and others should be here or using, using other icons or pictures, Maybe in that case, uh, we need to uh, build custom applications. And in that case, uh, we need to uh, use uh, Graph Cry and Java API. And so that you can, we, we can, we can um, write Java programs. So in the next section, uh, Caroline from uh, our partner Kagura will show a sample front end application using the uh, same demo data. Again, go back to uh, going back to uh, the architecture overview. I have explained the capability of uh, graph server, algorithm capability of this graph server, and and separating graph is these are uh, built-in tools. Uh, but at the same time, using graph client Java API, we can build custom REST server, and also custom visualization app. Uh, in this demo. Uh, this one and this one, 
uh, implemented in Java and JavaScript, respectively. Okay, then let me uh, give my screen to Caroline. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing. Okay, thank you, Yamanaka san. Hello, everyone. My name is Caroline. In the next few minutes, I will be talking about building a web application. Let me do a short introduction. I am a developer representing Kangura from Japan. We are located in Toyota City. There are system designer, developer, and architect in Kangura company. We build and design system according to the client needs. There are many non-technical people will be using this system. Information are retrieving from the graph are mainly using DGQL query. Therefore, we are building a web application to assist users to visualize the view with the Design REST API for the web application use. So, I will be going to pick one of the methods which Yamanaka-san had explained earlier, personalized page rank on PGS. Before building web application, we will need the response result from the REST API, which have been created by the backend developer using PGQL query. We will require three sets of information to show why the product is recommended. Firstly, we will need to run personalized page rank with input parameters of the node ID the customers that we will be focusing on, and the number of hopes required. A response status input will return. If it shows success, we will be running next REST API. The second REST API we will need is to run node match. This will return a list of 10 recommended products. Therefore, the result will be converting into a list of 10 recommended products and be displayed in the web application. The REST API we need is getting the custom path. We will need two input parameters, source node ID and destination node ID. The source node ID will be the customer we will be focusing on and the destination node ID will be one or all of the products retrieved from the previous two REST API that we have run. Therefore, the results will be converted into three type display for a better visualizable view. Next, Kagula members will design and develop the web application using HTML and JavaScript. We will be using D3 JavaScript library to convert to visualizable view using the return results from the REST API. All this information will be shown in the web application so that the user can freely use and understand. The main idea of this web application is to convert all the REST API results into visualizable view. So now I shall proceed to the demo. In this demo, it shows how the response result from the REST API will be displayed into a web application will be look like. The recommended products display area is the list of result retrieved from a node match and personalized page rank. Users are allowed to choose the product and see why it is recommended. After selecting, the graph will change according to the selected product. By default, the graph will be displayed at the first product of the list. When the new graph has loaded, 
the focus customer information will be displayed at the node, select the node display area in the top layer, which show a small customer icon, represent the customer that we will be focusing on. The second layer, product icon represent the product blocked by the customer, focus customers. The third layer shows a multiple customer icon. This customer icon shows that they have also bought the product displayed in the second layer, which is same as the focus customer. For example, let us select a product in the second layer. After selecting this product, the highlighted line in blue shows who have purchased this product. This will prove the connection between the focal customer and the other customer. Next, the most important layer is the nodes represent the product that other customer in the layer have bought in common. So this highlighted blue line shows that the customer had bought this recommended item. Therefore, this product will be recommended to the focus customer since he had not purchased before. Let us add in another recommended product. As you can see, it is a new set of graph with new information. This time, the most bottom will display the two recommended products according to the selected checkbox at the recommended product list. If you check another, it will become three. The recommended product displayed in the most bottom layer is displaying according to the page rank size. On the most left is the smallest value and the most right has the largest value. Alternatively, you can view the value by, click, by selecting the node and the page rank value will display under the properties. Now, let us select all the 10 recommended products. In this way, most of the customer have bought multiple items of the recommended products. Let us click one of the customer in the third layer. The line that highlighted in blue shows that this customer had bought all these items. By clicking the nodes, it will be easier to visualize the connection between the customer and the product that they have purchased. All this recommended product is based on personalized page rent theory. Therefore, by running the custom PathRest API, it will return all the connection between the customers and the products. Next, we can also view other customers with their recommended products. For example, let's ask for another customer in the customer search ID field over here. For example, our customer one, two, three, four, six. As you can see, a new set of 10 recommended items will be outtake. As you, uh, in the record, and also when running, when selecting a new customers, the algorithm retrieve data is, is using a very short period of time. Therefore, by using a graph, it will have a faster response result retrieve. So after searching, the focus customer will not be the same as before. This time, the focus customer will be the customer which we had just searched using the search customer ID field. The graph concept design is the same. We can search by customer and understand why the product is recommended to the customer. In this design, it is designed in four layers. Users are only allowed to move the top three layer horizontally. The first top layer represents customer that we will be focusing on. The second layer represents the product that the focus customer had bought. The third layer is customer that have bought the same product with the focal customer. And also in the third layer, the size of the customer icon is determined by the page rank value. 
the final layer is the recommended product bought by other customer and will be recommended to the focus customers. Let us select all the results once again. As you can see, the size of the icon is increasing from left to right with the page according to the page rank value. Alternatively, you can view the page rank value by selecting the node and it will be displayed under the properties. In this web application, user can also click on the nodes and get the information of the products or the customers and it will be displayed under the node selected area. This is the overview of getting the recommended product using personalized page rank with written status of success, node match to retrieve top 10 recommended products, and custom path is to get the connection between the customers and products and see how they are connected to each other. All this REST API is designed for web application and the web application is designed and developed by Kangula. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Carol, Mr. Ryan. Uh, um, one, one question is that um, when you uh, input one new customer uh, to the customer search box, uh, the uh, recommended the list of recommended products are refreshed, which means uh, the page rank was uh, calculated again for that customer, right? Ah, uh, yes. So when you search for a new customer, the recommended product and the graph display area, the algorithm will run once again according to the algorithm. According to the algorithm, firstly they will run the personalized page rank next node match to retrieve the 10 result and lastly the custom path to retrieve the graph results i see i see it, it's it's all done in in a second okay yes so it's all nice so you by using the graph the result retrieving is using a very short time okay okay i see thank you thank you for listening it was particularly nice to see the visualization of um, uh, the, the different edges, which immediately kind of intuitively tell you which products were bought by which customer when you color them in blue and so on. Again, that's the power of uh, visualization. So I should have um, uh, mentioned earlier that if you have any questions, uh, those who are listening, please post them in the Q&A box. Um, and we are happy to answer uh, any questions you might have. So I had one question uh, for you, Caroline, which was that you mentioned that the backend developers uh, wrote the PGQL queries. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was it, it was not difficult for them to write PGQL queries, right? Because they already knew SQL. Yes, it's true. But there is still some challenging such, such as the nodes, the ages, which cannot be found in the uh, SQL SQL. Right. Yeah. So you will need extra learning lesson to learn the ages, ages, and the syntax is slightly different, but overall it's like flat from condition. The right. standard structure is the method is the same it's just that the syntax is slightly different but overall it's easier to pick up if you understand sql yes yeah exactly yes thank you so riota do you have any thoughts on um you showed three algorithms which are interesting uh three algorithms for doing recommendation uh mm -hmm. recommendations i've noticed personalized page rank uh, used a lot and you use that in your demo as well. Do you have any thoughts on the different algorithms and the different use cases that might yes. satisfy? Yes. Yeah, personalized uh, page rank is often used for recommendation, but uh, it is the simplest, well, assume it to be the simplest ah, okay. algorithms among those three. And uh, well, especially in the sense that the latter two, like collaborative filtering and 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 uh, deep work. They need uh, they need uh, train they need to train uh, the oh, models, right? right. So, the, so they need a lot of data, and they need a kind of batch execution for uh, training the model during the night time or something. 
But uh, for uh, this personalized page rank algorithm, uh, as you can see, uh, you, once you uh, focus on one starting point, the algorithm itself can run very quickly. And it's, it's like an on the fly uh, recommendation. And right. uh, well, Carol Ryan's uh, demo is max or maximizing the benefit of uh, page rank algorithm in the sense. That's an excellent point. So when you're using graphs to build recommendation systems, like you said, personalized page rank can be applied immediately to your data mm. without the need for adding anything else, and you can you can get interesting results right away. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's and its performance is totally uh, scalable against the graph size. So that's a um, yeah um, important true. feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Very mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I think we can, we're getting close to the end of this session. Um, we have uh, here some links, some links to the uh, pointers to graph content on the oracle.com site. Uh, we have a blog, uh, I think Ryota pointed to it in a couple of slides for interesting explanations on these algorithms. We have the Ask Tom series. We are planning to have a session a month, so please come back and join us. Previous sessions are recorded. And of course, some of us have Twitter accounts. You're welcome to follow us on Twitter. We have a YouTube channel for Spatial and Graph. And I believe Yota has posted a direct link to uh, the next uh, uh, Ask Tom session. So sure. yeah. there we go. Okay, sorry, I did something there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, with that, uh, I will wrap up and thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you again in a future session.